Hello guys, my name is Glassfoot, and welcome to this episode of Critical Review. Today I'm looking at a movie that is at least 15 years old, probably older, because I'm not exactly sure when this movie came out. Yu-Gi-Oh! The Movie, The Pyramid of Light. So when I was a kid, I got massively into Yu-Gi-Oh! around the time when I was eight-ish, I want to say. Basically, um, in second grade and then into third grade is when I got massively into anime in general um, and a lot of... I have two younger brothers. One of them just happens to be enough younger than me that my parents in the were in the perfect position of what do they allow me to watch that is okay for him to watch? Because when I was eight, he was two. So I ended up watching a lot of preschool shows later than most people my age and overall it doesn't change a ton of stuff I still found out and grew up on uh, Teen Titans and Avatar and just a bunch of those shows but still it just so happens of when all I, I found it a little bit later than most other people but well beside the point anyway like I said, I got massively into Yu-Gi-Oh. I have a bunch of uh, every all the manga that I'm currently pointing to right now. Those are all just Yu-Gi-Oh volumes. Um, I have a couple out of the original Duelist run. I have most of uh, the GX manga run, which that's coming. The last one should get here. And I might review those books just because I can. I've got a couple of the 5Ds run, one of Zexel, one of Arc 5, and then I have uh, the run of the manga-only arc, Yu-Gi-Oh! R, which I also might do a review on that one. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! R in the manga takes place, uh, takes the place of what in the anime is the Waking the Dragons arc. You know, when Yu-Gi get, uh, Yu-Gi, Joey, and Kaiba get those legendary dragon monsters. Yeah, the, that manga, t uh, the R storyline takes place of Waking the Dragons. Um, but, again, all this is as a point, but uh, the reason I got this into it is I got big into Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, really big. I still have a ton of the cards. I'm still into Yu-Gi-Oh! personally. Um, I don't play the card game as much anymore. Uh, used to. I have a number of decks that were really good with, uh, a while back. Um, I have no idea how good they would be today. Um, I still play a couple of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh games online. Yu-Gi-Oh led me into getting into Magic, uh, which is another game that I play. I'm much more casual in both those in both card games, though. I don't really play competitively. I am not a super competitive type of person with that kind of stuff, so I don't play them. But all of this is beside the point when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! the movie, which, uh, from when I was about eight to about nine-ish, was my favorite movie of all time. Mostly because it had to deal with, like, my favorite franchise at the time, which, again, was Yu-Gi-Oh! Sorry about the long preamble, guys. Let's get into the plot of Yu-Gi-Oh! the movie, The Pyramid of Light. The plot of the movie pretty much involves one of the people that the Pharaoh Atem defeated uh, 3,000 years ago when he sealed the power of the Shadow Games uh, by the name of Anubis coming back and wrecking havoc. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, as you do, but he wants revenge on the Pharaoh for defeating 3,000 years ago. So, you know, like most villains in Yu-Gi-Oh! wants to just defeat the protagonist because reasons. Uh, this time, however, the stakes are a little bit higher than they typically are in a duel. Uh, similar to darts, Anubis wants to destroy the world with the monsters. Because what other goal should a Yu-Gi-Oh villain have than to destroy the planet that you that you rely on to live? Yeah, moron. But anyway, most of this movie revolves around a duel between Yu-Gi and Kaiba because Kaiba wants to defeat Yu-Gi to prove that he's the best in the world. Uh, we actually, early on in the film, see a uh, simulation that Kaiba is running, that Kaiba's had some of his scientists run, basically as a, can I defeat Yugi with this strategy thing, 
And here's the biggest disconnect between the god cards in the movie and the shows on the comics versus in the actual game. Basically, uh, in like like I said, this scene has like the biggest disconnect because in it you see Kaiba uh, summon the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon and then use a card to double its attack where Yugi responds by sending two of the gods to the graveyard to activate Obelisk's effect, which is to destroy pretty much every other monster on the field, on your opponent's side of the field. The only problem with that, specifically, is that I'm pretty sure you can't activate that effect on your opponent's turn. And also, in the movie, it just raises Obelisk's attack to infinity, which then instantly defeats Kaiba because, you know, you cannot beat that, but... Anyway, beside the point, Kaiba goes to Pegasus, beats him in a duel, gets two cards to defeat Yugi, one of which has been supplied by Anubis, duels Yugi, activates one of the cards to destroy all the gods once Yugi has summoned them. Turns out that the Pyramid of Light, the card that Kaiba got, and the natal of the movie, is actually evil, and it sucks the souls of Yugi, Joey, Tristan, and Taya into the... Millennium Puzzle, because apparently it can do that, because, you know, freaky magic is a thing in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and they end up destroying it, because reasons, destroy the card, and Yugi magically wins the duel, and then a monster shows up, uh, summoned from Anubis, and they use uh, the Shining, blue Eye Shining Dragon effect of sacrificing itself to kill it to defeat Anubis, because, you know, what else are you gonna do? All of this, mind you, is while Kaiba is refusing to accept that magic exists. Like, he straight up at the end of the movie says, I don't know what happened here, but I'll defeat you next time. Really? You don't know what happened? I, I don't understand how the dude can't accept that magic exists. He has witnessed it multiple times. He got mind crushed by Yugi in episode one. Like, shattered his brain, mind crushed. I don't understand how Kaiba, whatever, beside the point, that's a discussion video for if I ever want to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! or its characters in the future. But anyway, how this movie holds up plot-wise. For the most part, it does. There are a couple of wonky things, mostly having to do with the fact that the way the movie progresses kind of revolves around, you know, a duel. But, you know... It's Yu-Gi-Oh, so of course the plot revolves around a card game. I enjoy it, like, I'm trying to find a way to, like, properly summarize the plot. Oh, here it is. Evil Egyptian spirit comes back from the dead, possesses a human host, that is Kaiba, takes over to destroy its hem and destroy the world. He fails because Yugi and his pals use the power of friendship to destroy him, and all is saved by the end of the day. Yep, that's the, that, that's the plot of the movie. Which is fine, you know, for a Yu-Gi-Oh film, it's completely, it's a good, I enjoy it, it's fairly decent, and it's a fun plot. Now, this being said, none of the characters really evolve throughout this film, which I guess is obvious we have an entire franchise, and like five other seasons of the show, for these characters to develop and grow, so they don't need to go through any, like, major arcs here, but... It does kind of hamper it a little bit because there is literally zero character growth at all in this movie. Kaiba still is the arrogant asshole who wants to defeat Yugi at the end of it. Yugi's still the power of friendship will save all, you know, smart guy of the group. Atem is the best duelist there is. Joey and Tristan are pretty much your big dumb morons of the group that can that will beat anyone to a pulp if they have to. And Taya is still the you know, emotional support of this group. Which, by the way, Yu-Gi-Oh! has a five-man band, which makes me like it even more. Actually, here's one of the things. Pretty much every single season of Yu-Gi-Oh! or season series of Yu-Gi-Oh! like with the new protagonist and whatnot, always ends up forming a five-man band. With Yu-Gi-Oh! it's pretty obvious. It's Yu-Gi, Atem, Joey, Tristan, and Taya. With uh, Tem is the leader, Joey is his lancer, Tristan is the big guy, Tay is the heart, and Yugi being the smart guy. Being as he's the one who knows the most about dueling and how all the cards work, so he's able to do it. 
in GX, you end up with it as Jaden as the leader, Cyrus as his lancer, Alexis is the heart of the group, Huckleberry ends up being the uh, big guy, and I would argue Bastion, but he ends up disappearing after season two, but he's still probably the closest person I would call the smart guy of that group's uh, five-man band. In 5Ds, it's fairly obvious it's the five signers with Yusei as the leader, Jack as his lancer, leaving Crow as, oddly enough, the big guy, Akiza as the smart one, and then Luna, and then Luna as the heart. Um, from there, I haven't kept up super well with Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, the series beyond 5Ds, with 5Ds being my personal favorite series, so it's harder for me to pin down exactly the rest of them, but it's very interesting that that dynamic holds true for all of them. Where was I? <laughs> Sorry. Five Man Band is my favorite trope of all time, uh, just because I, I love it, and I don't know why it's my favorite. It might be because I watch shows with that dynamic a lot as a kid, but just the five man band thing is my personal favorite trope of all time and I pretty much like most things that hold that trope especially if they're well done I did, okay look if it's very very poorly done I'm not gonna like it anyway but if the five man band trope is very well done I'm gonna love the crap out of the show that I'm watching with it anyway <laughs> Ooh, wow I'm gonna get off on a lot of tangents here sorry guys Anyway, uh, so like I said, the characters don't have a ton of growth, pretty, which isn't needed here. It's Yu-Gi-Oh. You don't need a ton of growth of the characters for the story to work at all. But, you know, it kind of would have been nice to see at least a little bit of growth from our characters overall. But not totally necessary. Yeah, I just... Here's the thing with Yu-Gi-Oh, is that it is really really hard to say with any certainty that you will like it if you're like me and part of its nostalgia part of it is the fact that i for whatever reason just enjoy the story of Yu-Gi-Oh. you're probably going to enjoy this film just as more of the same if you're not a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh, if you don't typically like the story that gets told throughout the series you're probably not going to like this movie which you know, isn't a bad thing, it's just different tastes from me. I don't really knock anyone for disliking stuff that I like, or liking stuff that I don't. I typically like to understand why people enjoy X thing over X thing, but I don't hate on people for liking what I don't. Yep. Anyway, with all that taken into consideration over the movie, with the plot being what it is, the fairly simplistic nature of it, and the characters not really going through any personal growth throughout the film, I have to... For and even then, for me, this movie is a sal This movie rolls a thirteen. No, I don't think it's the best thing in the world. Do I still enjoy it? Yes. Do I think it's a movie that I necessarily need to go back to super often? No. It's a very fun movie for when I am extremely bored, or when I feel like a kick of nostalgia and I don't feel like watching through a hundred some odd episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh GX, Five Ds, or any of the other series to get that fix. That's all I really have to say on the movie, guys. Highly entertaining if you're a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! If not, probably not going to enjoy the movie nearly as much. But, yeah. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I know that this got a little bit rambly and went on a lot longer than most other videos. Actually, lately, most of them have been getting on long and rambly, but especially this one, I'm really sorry how rambly it was. With the very simplistic nature of what Yu-Gi-Oh! in and of itself is, there wasn't a ton for me to talk about because it's basically always bad guy comes back, wants to kill Yu-Gi, and Yu-Gi defeats him in duel. So, but, you know, <laughs> sorry about that. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, links to both of those are going to be in the description as always. If you enjoyed the video and you would like to see more of this face and keep following for more content that I do, hit the subscribe button down below. Yeah, if you would like to watch more videos like this, what I call critical reviews, that playlist is going to be linked right here. If you'd like to watch another video of mine, whatever that's going to be, is right there. Anyway, I hope that you guys have a great day, and as always, peace out.